Games of War 4th Edition brings you the battles of World War II in epic 15mm scale. Go to beastsofwar.com to get the latest in news, tactics and tutorials. Fight for the Iron Kingdoms as a Warcaster. Take control of the mighty Jax, arcane devices and dark sorceries to bring the fight to the War Machine Hub on beastsofwar.com. Hello and welcome to What's in the Box again uh, with myself and Gianna and today we're going to be talking about uh, an unusual vehicle that the British um, sort of cobbled together after Dunkirk during the whole time of the LDV and you know the formation of the Home Guard and all this mm -hmm. you know we must defend our island all this sort of stuff the problem was that after Dunkirk we had no tanks we left them all on the beach and we left them all lying around France because A they were rubbish B, they were too difficult to get back on a boat um, because they didn't float. Yes, but we, but we rectified that for D-Day. <laughs> we made them float for them. Um, so essentially we had no heavy guns and no tanks uh, and very few armoured cars and anything we did have was practically rubbish anyway. So what did we do? We made more rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> this, this is the Mark III Armadillo improvised armoured car. Car, uh, truck, truck. Armor, armored vehicle, yes. truck. It's it's horrid. Uh, it looks like it's based off an old Morris two and a half ton or one and a half ton truck. Um, it's it's terrible. It's terrible. It has a wooden fort yeah. built onto the back of it. <laughs> so all you kiddies out there, go out and build a fort on the back of Daddy's truck. He'll be most impressed. And you can say it's an armadillo, <laughs> as we say in the states, armadillo. An armadillo. Armadillo. Okay. <laughs> Butchering our language. <laughs> <laughs> All right. As uh, the more recent full action vehicles have been coming out, we're getting the little tokens oh, for smoke, and we have some transfers here as well. So there's our little transfer set. Don't know if you'd really bother with putting stars and stuff on it, but hey, oh, it's just a target. It's just a target. Just and hit here. Our smoke and fire and. Everything in there too. Let's. Oh, actually, let's look at the stack cards. I do like those cards. I yeah, think those are really such a nice idea. So it gives us the points cost for an inexperienced and a regular. Clearly, there are no veteran crews for these. Nobody things. could make it. No. <laughs> Nobody would last long enough to become a veteran with this thing. And we have a little bit of details on the back with options and stuff as well as. You can put a low velocity anti tank gun on this thing. Yes, you can. So light anti-tank gun, light machine gun, and rifle. I assume one of the crew can fire a rifle while everyone else is busy with machine guns. If I was on that crew, <laughs> I'd be making that thing go as fast as it could and get away from wherever we are. Yes. Just driving away going, do you realize what we're in? Do you realize this won't do anything? It's a fort! <laughs> it's a fort, but it also has wheels and an engine. We're leaving. <laughs> Greg hit the accelerator. All right. So the armadillo, which I'm, I'm still laughing about, but there, there is one worse than this. Yeah, I'll, I'll get to that in a minute. So this is the back of the truck with the wooden fort. This is wood. Well, let's just yeah, let's nice. just say this is meant to be wood, with a few firing slots in there, and on the back of the truck uh, cargo body is a mount for the gun. There's also the cab, which they've done a rudimentary job of trying to armor and protect it a little bit. You do uh, what you gotta do. Yeah, you do what you gotta do. I mean, it. I guess it makes you feel better. I suppose. Yeah. More than more than being effective, it just makes you feel better. So, onto the metal parts. There are a few with this kit, so be warned. Uh, let's have a look here and get them under camera. There we go. So wheels. Wheels are good for lorries. So we have four of these. <laughs> we don't need to know about the wheels. Very it's typical standard GI good. issue. Yep. Uh, we then have a few of the, the weapons, so if I center them on the shot here, we have the two Lewis guns, which are bizarre but strangely effective in their own right. They have a magazine, which is a circular, circular yeah. a big circular disc that sits on the top. I think is it 25 or 30 rounds or something per... A holdover from World War One. Yeah. yeah. At Not... this point in time, you getting whatever you can out of stores. To... Yeah, pretty much. And this is the uh, quote-unquote main gun of the Armadillo. This is a three-pounder... Is that an anti something yeah, on a ship? It's it's like an anti aircraft gun, I suppose. Uh, it's a <laughs> three pounder, I guess, a semi automatic or automatic uh, cannon. Huh. Uh, French Hotchkiss design. So we were clearly, when we were coming to build stuff like this, we were clearly scraping the bottom yeah, of the barrel here. Most definitely. We had nothing 
good for It makes you wonder what the recoil on that was. Because was this thing a rocking when it was firing? I'm pretty sure it was, because it was not that big a vehicle to start with. Uh, right, so we have a couple of crew figures here as well, if I can get my hand out of the way. So we have one fella here, uh, who's clearly operating the gun, and we have another fella here who is loading the gun. Motor. So he's got the clip. I believe this is a 20 or 30 millimeter gun by the looks of it. It's when it comes to naval guns, I'm like, well, you know, say pounder or millimeter. Thank you very much. Two fuel tanks, mud guards, because you need those, and the uh, gun shield for the the three pounder, which is ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. As well as the two heads for the vehicle's crew. What can we say about this thing? Um. It was really a make-do sort of thing. What was its main role? I'm not sure. It was anti-aircraft. Was it? Uh, essentially, it was designed, I think, to protect airfields. That's why you had the Hotchkiss gun on it. It was an anti-aircraft gun. Yeah. So, and, and the fear was that, you know, they were going to drop in uh, German paratroopers, Fallschirmager. Yeah. And this was to prevent that from happening, ideally, but... <laughs> Yeah. It it makes you wonder if it was meant to be a, a primarily an anti air vehicle, why they bothered putting the fort on the back of it? They clearly expected because it Because you're under, always better in a fort. They they clearly expected it to come under some sort of direct fire. Yeah. Which would have been terrifying if you were in that thing. But still. Oh. Well, would 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 <laughs> would would depending on the thickness of the wood stop a bullet. It should. A really sleeper will stop. Well, if you estimate, that's probably it. The smaller caliber, yes. Yeah. Uh, anything bigger, no. Rifle, right at, rifle at long range. Uh, at a Mauser, yeah, I would. Yeah. Any submachine gun, probably would. Um, well, you mean you're talking most submachine guns at the time were nine mil. Yeah. So I mean, they're not really going to do much. No. Um, but yeah, I suppose if you get onto like your heavier. But an MG forty twos, forty threes, no. For, a forty two would eventually chew through. Yeah, it. I would. Um, I remember seeing, what was that, Arlie Army's thing where he was comparing weapons and mm -hmm. stuff. And he did the M16 and the AK. Oh, and the AK would go And the AK anything. went straight through everything, yeah. and the M16 struggled, and I was yeah. like, that's, that's kind of scary, but obviously they didn't have AKs then. No. Still, still nearly a decade away from that. But let's put the vehicle together anyway. Let's, let's, let's do it. Let's, let's <laughs> put, it, put it together uh, American Hot Rod style. So what we'll do is we'll swipe and all the work will be done. And we're back, and uh, yeah, the armadillo is now built and primed, and still looks as useless as it did on the box. Oh, come on, be but fair. It, it, they had what they had. And they, they had to make do with what they had. And we can sit here and make fun of it. And, yeah. But yeah. The, the reality of it is, is they had you know, all this stuff laying around. They had no options, so yeah. they took what they had to make something. And what, what they made, I guess, in the anti-aircraft role, this wouldn't be too bad, because it's still no. a good cannon on it, regardless. I still doubt... But it's still funny looking. It's still funny looking. <laughs> I doubt why they had to bother with the two Lewis guns as well. They could have been more useful with LDV sections that didn't have guns. Yeah. You know? <laughs> but yeah, let's, let's have a look at it. And uh, yeah. The, the, the gun shield is actually kind of funny. I <laughs> just think the, the whole Do you think they just took that right off an old destroyer or cruiser or something? I bet they, they did. I bet they did. They probably had a lot of their First World War Navy. They were just stripping for parts. I think had to weigh... This so with all that up armoring on it, if you want to call it up armor, that poor truck had to probably struggle to... I'd say it probably had an extra two tons of weight on it that it didn't really want to have on it. Let's take the camera out a little bit so you can just see the whole thing. It's a very tall vehicle, that's for sure. But it's... Do you know what? In a way, it's charming because it's mm -hmm. typical British ingenuity yeah. and a little bit of eccentricity chucked in as well. Why not? And that's what makes a great British vehicle. <laughs> Just something completely out of left field, you know, let's get a truck and make it work. However, this leads me on to another vehicle. What vehicle? Uh, so you have the Armadillo. Yes. We then had one called the Buffalo. I can't remember how many were made. It's in the Bovington Tank Museum. I seen it recently and I went, that is as crazy looking in real life as it is in any sort of miniature form. It was basically a lorry with uh, all the metalwork stripped off, everything down to the chassis. Okay. And then they built a fort on top of it out of concrete. What? They just took a concrete bunker and went, we can put that on a lorry. And they did. Concrete? <laughs> yeah. Bunker? Yeah. On a lorry? On a lorry. Or truck. Lorry? Yeah. What? <laughs> <laughs> I 
Apparently it was so heavy that if it hit a proper sized, like if it hit a pothole in the road, it would just snap its suspension or break an axle. Well, yeah. <laughs> I, I kind of figure the Buffalo was more a sort of a, if we need a, a defensive point, but there are no bunkers nearby, I guess we just sort of drive it up and just leave and it there. And then just leave it there. It's one shot. Yeah, basically. Um, I could imagine it would be a bit more protected than this thing. Oh, uh, definitely. I mean, it's concrete, yeah. for goodness sake. Unless you shoot the wheels out from it and you make it fall over, make it roll over. Yeah. <laughs> Don't park it on a hill. Um, I wonder if they'll make a kit for that one. Uh, that would be interesting. You know, if you're going to go this whole route of this Operation Sea Lion, what mm. if, why not do stuff like that? Because Cause it's, it's it, it was real. Yeah, it you was know, real. It, it exists. It existed. So it, that's an awesome what if. Mm-hmm. How, how good would this stuff have been against the, the panzers of the, the German Wehrmacht, which I could imagine. Because, I mean, if you think about it, if you took a couple of these, or the Buffalo, and you put them at choke points on some country lane in, you know, England. Yeah. You now have two concrete bunkers sitting there and throwing, you know, rounds down range towards the enemy. It yeah. would be effective in stopping them until you could outflank them or whatever you're trying to do. It would give or you the a RAF, moment. you know, to come in. Yeah, it would always give you a moment respite yeah. against something. You find that time and time again when we were fighting back against the Germans. All it took was a well-placed machine gun to stop a platoon and then they'd go, oh. Yeah. <laughs> or a single tank in a lot of cases. Just yeah. anything well positioned just worked really well. Uh, so yeah, that's the Armadillo. And that's a little brief history of the unusual vehicles that the British had to come up with in a pinch. So guys, put your comments down below, let me know what you think. Have you got one of these yet? Have you played with one? Uh, have you seen one in real life? Because if you have, I'd like some photos. I don't think there's That'd one in cool. Bovington. Yeah. There is a Buffalo though, so go check that out if you're near uh, the Tank Museum anytime soon. So guys, thanks very much for watching, and we'll see you again soon. Go ahead and check out our other content on screen now, and be sure to check out beastofwar.com for the latest gaming news and gaming let's plays. And while you're at it, why not hit subscribe and remember to ding our dong. Go on, you know you want to click it. Go on.